Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about professional relationships and how to deal with difficult co-workers. So I got an email um, from a viewer about asking about my advice about professional relationships and how to handle it when things go wrong. All right, so I have, unfortunately, I have experience with this. Um, and I say unfortunately because nobody wants to have experience with bad coworkers and or bad situations that happen with coworkers. Um, and this is just my advice for, for how I got through it. Um, this is how I coped <laughs> when I had to deal with these things. Um, and I will tell you this, that um, when these things happen, you know, part of you professionally um, gets a little, a little, uh, it's, it just gets you a little bit tougher for the next time. And you don't want to make yourself too tough. You know, you, you want to be able to be yourself um, when you are in a professional environment. But at the same time, you want to be able to, um, when things happen that are sort of unexpected, like somebody breaks your trust that you trusted, um, you want to be able to know how to handle these things. So being a good coder is not just about, you know, knowing the books and knowing the rules and things like that. It is also about professional carriage. You know, sometimes people will discount that part and they'll say, well, all I need to know is how to code. No, you also need to know how to present yourself. You also need to know how to work with others in a professional environment you are going to be working around some of the most intelligent people you will ever meet in your whole life. And because of this, you know, you, you really do have to up your game. And when you're working with coworkers, you know, uh, we as medical coders, uh, we don't have to have a degree, you know, medical coding, uh, to get it credentialed, all you need is a high school diploma or a GED. So it is all about being able to communicate with all kinds of education levels of people, you know, and, and how they are, how they present themselves and things like that. So knowing how to, to deal with all walks of people is really going to help you. Um, I, a few years ago, I've had, and I mentioned this before on another video, I've had um, training from the Arbinger Institute, and I will leave a link in the description box below. They have a lot of good resources on how to reframe your thinking when you're in a different situation with different people. Um, how you handle things is is going to benefit you if you know how to effectively handle it and efficiently handle it. Because I have to think sometimes when I go through these situations with coworkers that is uh, less than positive, that it is not me. And that, um, that there are going to be people that dislike you, uh, because you know a lot and there's going to be people that just dislike you for just general purpose, you know, um, uh, because they don't like, uh, your, your positive attitude or they don't like that, um, that you enjoy your work. And, and, you know, sometimes people, when they are, when they are not happy, um, you know, the, the expression misery loves company. There are people that are like that and you will, you will meet those kind of people. And it is all about how you are going to reframe your thinking and, and how you can handle these situations. When I first got here, I, um, and, and it's funny that I got that email about the, the advice, um, about professional relationships because, uh, a few years ago <laughs> when I got here, um, I had a coworker, I actually had two coworkers, but one I'm going to talk about because she was the one that was the, the bulk of my problem, you know, at the time. Um, when I first got here, uh, I got put into this clinic and, and I had done inpatient professional service rounds from where I was coming from. And that is a highly specialized clinic. Okay. Cause it has different rules. It's not like outpatient, but yet it's not like inpatient, but it's a combination of the two. And so uh, when I got here and I got put into this clinic because uh, my supervisor was like, I really need somebody to, to work in this clinic and, and I need somebody to help these girls, you know, and I need y'all to work together as a team. And I'm thinking, okay, no big deal. You know, I, I can work with other people as a team, you know, no big deal. And um, one of the girls just did not 
did not care for me. She she was not excited that I was there. She was mad because she enjoyed the fact that it was her and her friend and they were in this clinic and they did not like any outsiders. Um, but the other girl was um, just a little softer and she, you know, I would talk to her because she was a little bit easier to talk to. Um, but the other girl was just like, she was not having it. She was upset and she she let our supervisor know too. She's like, well, we don't need help in this clinic. I don't know why you're you're giving her to us. And um, she's like, no, no, you all do need help. And you know, I would really like to breathe new life into this clinic and see, you know, if maybe that can help. You know. So when I got there, you know, I had a system down from my previous place, and I um, I was very efficient in how I ran with my encounters, and so. Um, my production levels looked way different from theirs and I wasn't doing it to, to try to make myself look better or anything. This was just how I was working. You know, I was very efficient with it. You know, I already knew how to do it and this was just what I was used to doing. I wasn't used to doing low, low production. I was used to doing high production because of the demand of where I was coming from. And so when I got here and they, they were only doing a fraction of that, I was just like, um... I don't know how you guys are only doing a fraction, you know, but I'm thinking this in my head. I didn't say this to them, you know, so I'm like, okay, whatever. And, uh, so after a while it was high school games, you know, it was like, um, the one coworker that really did not like me. She, uh, she hid records, she hid dates of service and, uh, she did it personally to sabotage, you know, anything that I was doing. And, um, I would be picking up, um, and, and they found out in audits, um, because we all went over audits together and, uh, they found out that I was picking up other additional diagnoses that were already listed and they, they, um, they didn't think that they could pick it up and they never did. And the auditor never caught it cause the auditor didn't think about it either. And then when I came along, you know, I was picking up all these other additional diagnoses that were clearly documented and I was just like it's there you know and they were like no no you can't pick it up and I'm like yeah you can you know and I'm showing them how in the book how I got it and my supervisor was like this is what we needed this is this is awesome this is excellent this is what I want and um so of course that just made the situation even worse you know it was just like you know so it was it was more of you know uh I, I started calling it hell week <laughs> Because it was just like, that was how it felt, you know. And it, it just got progressively worse every time. And uh, I eventually went to my supervisor and I told her, I was like, well, um, I need you to move me from this clinic, you know. Um, because I had just gone through the loss of my mother. And it was just getting worse and worse and worse. And what was worse is that this coworker knew I had just lost my mom. And I was going through all of these things. And, you know, she was just not showing any mercy. She was just, it was actually just getting worse. And, um, I was like, she doesn't like me. She's very hostile. You know, I just don't know what to do anymore, you know? And she's like, well, you know, I can't, I can't have her being hostile with you. And I'm like, well, then can you please talk to her or do something because, or move me out of the clinic because they don't need me. You know, she's like, no, 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 I need you to be in the clinic. And I'm like, okay, but they need to do something with their attitude because I can't, you know? And she's like, well, um, she goes, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. So I said, okay. So she brought her in there and, uh, she was like, I need you two to start working together. She's like, because the other girl, um, nobody seems to have a problem with her. Um, but you two just don't seem to be able to get along. And I'm thinking, is she really throwing me into this? Cause I've tried to work with this lady and, you know, she just was not, you know, wanting to work with me. You know, what is what is the deal? And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, like I here I trusted my supervisor to, to work this out. And she's she's telling me, you know, that it's it's me too. And I'm like, I, I just don't know what to do. And what got me at that moment was she said, well, if you two can't work it out, if you two cannot get on the same page, I'm going to write you both up. And I'm thinking, this is all I needed. You know, <laughs> like, are you freaking kidding me? This is all I needed. And at the time, I had not, you know, thought about professional development and Arbiter Institute or anything like that. I had not had the training at that time. So all I could think of was, you know, it's about me and I can't believe this. And 
<laughs> so uh, I was just like, you know what, whatever. And all I could think of was, how can I get another job? You know, I needed to look for another job. And that's, that's that was immediately what I was thinking because I was just like, I'm getting no support here. And I have to go through all of this. And I just lost my mom. And I'm like, I'm going through too much stress. It was so much stress at the time. Like, I was like, literally, like, my nerves were just gone, you know. And, um, but at the end of that meeting, my supervisor said, you know, you two really should talk sometime. She goes, because I think you two have a lot more in common than you think you do. And I'm thinking, I have nothing in common with this woman. You know, she, she's horrible. And she, you know, she just, uh, she just, just making my life miserable. I can't stand it, you know. And um, so I'm like, whatever. At that point, I was just like, I'm so done. I'm like, okay, fine, you know. And so I, I went back to my desk and I put my headphones on and I just started working. And I'm like, you know, I just have to figure out something else, you know. And um, the way the office was set up, we were in these bullpens. And we happened to be, I was on this bullpen. There was an aisle and then there was her desk. And, um, so after about an hour, you know, I'm sitting there working and things and, and I have my headphones on and, you know, um, I feel my chair, like a little tap on my chair and I, and I took my headphones off and she said, Hey, can I get you another data service? And because she, for whatever reason, I don't really remember anymore. Uh, she kept the records locked in her desk. It wasn't in a community uh, desk, uh, in a community chest where we could just lock it up. Um, because there was records in a community chest, but um, it was locked up in her desk. And I was like, yeah, sure, you know, okay. Which was nice because I didn't have to sit there and ask her for it. Um, she knew I was ending, that nearing the end of that date, she could see. And um, she was like, you know, do, would you like another one? So I was like, yeah, sure. And so I took it and and um, when she gave it to me, she was just like, you know, I really do uh, want to say. And then she just stopped. And I was just looking at her like, what is this lady going to say? What is she going to say to me? And she said, uh, I really am sorry about your mom. And um, And this had been, you know, my mom had just passed uh, about a month uh, after month before. And, um, and I said, well, you know, thank you. And, um, she said, you know, I lost my mom the same way. And I was just like, Oh, okay. And so, uh, she's like, so I understand a lot of what you're going through. And I just looked at her and I said, it doesn't seem like, like you, you know, you would, you would be as, understanding of what I'm going through because of how um things have been going between us you know and she said well um she's like I'm sorry she's like sometimes I get like that and I don't know why and so I was just like okay so things started to get better after this and it was just like okay so we could we started to be able to work together a little bit more I still didn't trust um, her because when things like this happen and your trust gets broken with your coworkers, it's sort of hard to get it back. And I can't say that I ever really trusted her, but um, after after we had this this talk and everything, uh, it did make things a lot easier. Um, and and after a while, you know, we sort of had that like truce sort of ceasefire you know uh between us and it was like okay we can work together a little bit better now and um it was a few months later that she left and she went and took another job and um so I was like well you know and then she's like you know I I hated you when you got here in the beginning I said I know <laughs> I know you did and she's like but you know I I know you're a good coder and I respect you and and I said that's really awesome that's awesome to hear you know and so she was like you know, maybe I'll see you around. I was like, sure. And so I ended up seeing her later on. Um, they had a, a conference and I saw her there. And, um, you know, it was just very cordial and things like that. And uh, just a couple of days ago, I actually ran into her at the store. And so it's funny now that we see each other that it's it's like we're old friends, you know, even though 
we were never technically friends, you know, uh, but you would never know there was all this animosity. And I learned after that experience that it is important to know how to handle difficult coworkers. And um, like I said, Arbinger Institute really did help because uh, reframing your, your thinking and the fact that, you know, it's not about you, it's about that person and whatever it is that they're going through. And I think that for her, she, her seeing me go through grief, you know, because she was going, she had gone through grief and she had gone through it uh, really bad as well. Um, it sort of just, it just reminded her and she just sort of lashed out on me. And then the fact that, you know, I, I was in a clinic that she thought that she had under control and she she was resentful of our supervisor for putting me in there because she felt like it was a personal failing on her part which it, it had nothing to do with her you know it, it had everything to do with the fact that that clinic had an increase in in patient uh, load and we needed to just cover that cover that and and you know in order to do that you, know, you had to bring in somebody that didn't need to be trained and they could just walk in and just, you know, pick up and, and help, you know? And so it was just like, you know, <laughs> so after a while it was just, you know, and now I see her, it's just like, Oh, you know, we can sit there and we can talk about professional things that happen. And, and whenever I've seen her before, you know, um, for conferences or whatever, she'll, uh, She'll talk to me and she'll ask me questions professionally and, you know, about coding and things like that. And I can explain it to her and, and she knows that she can reach out and ask me questions. And it's really nice. You know, it's a different, uh, <laughs> it is a different dynamic now. And so, uh, you know, that was one of those ones that you just, you know, an experience that you have. But um, when you have instances with coworkers and that are where you know your friends you happen to be friends and and another lady I happen to be her friend um we were had been friends for many years this other lady and me and um she uh for four years we never fought never had a single fight and anything that I learned anything that I knew I shared with her, you know, and she, she was always very grateful and she was always, you know, very engaged and, and she's like, I know if I have any questions I can ask you. And so it was, it was always a good, good relationship, I thought, you know, and so one day, um, I found out that she was talking about me really bad behind my back. And so I said, you know, I confronted her about it and I said, you know, um, I'm like, you know, I, I, I heard somebody say that you said this and, and she was just like, uh, no, no, I didn't say that. And I said, okay. But then I showed her proof of that. Yes, she did say it. And, um, she got very defensive and I was just like, you know, I don't understand like what happened. You know, we're, we're like, you're my closest friend and, you know, you're my coworker and we have to work together and, you know, what, what, what are we going to do? You know? And she, um, she was like, well, you know, um, I never meant for you to, to, uh, hear that or anything like that. And I'm like, that's just as bad as if you said it and I didn't know, you know? And so, um, it was very difficult after that, uh, to be around her, but, you know, I still had to work in the same office as her. And so, I just did my very best to, um, you know, continue to work with her professionally, but I did not, um, I was not like, I couldn't continue to be a personal friend of hers. And it was hard, you know, you, when you're, when you're friends with somebody at work and suddenly you're not, you know, it's like, what do you do, you know? Um, and fortunately for me, you know, I was able to move to my new office at the time and so I didn't have to be around her for very long. Um, but it was about five months before I moved into my new office. And that was a long five months because you're talking about somebody that I was very close friends with and we had lunch together every day and then you just stop. So um, you are going to encounter that uh, sometimes in your career as a medical coder because, again, you are working around all kinds of people and there's going to be people that you like 
and there's going to be people that you don't really get along with, you know, um, and there's people that you're going to trust and there's going to be people that will break your trust. So, um, how you handle these things, uh, plays a big part of it. Uh, but never stop being yourself. Just that's like my biggest bit of advice is don't stop being yourself. Um, if I allowed people who were negative before to get to me and make me negative as well, then that other person has won, you know? Um, so I look at the people that are, um, most important to me, which is my providers. And I look at what my goal is and to make sure that they are getting all the credit that they deserve, which is why I say sometimes like, what other people think about me anymore doesn't really matter. Like, like coworkers and stuff, like what they think about me and, and I don't have to have everybody be my friend, you know? Um, and that, that makes me a little bit harder, like, um, emotionally a little bit more harder. Um, but that's okay because, uh, it does, you do get tougher after a while. And, um, it is a professional necessity sometimes. Um, but like I said, my goal is to always make sure that my providers are well taken care of. And having that as a goal has really helped in those situations where there's people that just give you attitude just because of general purpose. You know, they just want to give you attitude. And so it's just like, okay, you know, um, but I'm not here for you. That's how I think now. I'm not here for you. I'm, I'm here for my providers. And when I get good feedback from them and I get, um, well, thank you for helping me and thank you for supporting me. Thank you for making sure that I get all the credit that I deserve. And I've learned a lot because of you. Those types of comments are what help to drive me. So, uh, let that be your guide. You know, the fact that you have a, a career that you like and, and set that goal of, this is what is important to me. Look at what is important to you. And I will still continue to do nice things for my coworkers. I will still continue to do nice things for people I consider my friend. Um, but if I end up, those if those relationships end up ending, you know, I always uh, go back to that uh, saying that, that goes, people. some people are in your life for a reason and others for a season. And I try to think about like, what did I learn from them? What did I learn from this relationship um, that was for a season and not, you know, um, not a permanent thing, you know? And so that's just something that, you know, I wanted to share today um, because, you know, sometimes you will have those situations that happen with coworkers um, or people that you, you feel like you could have counted on. Um, and sometimes they will let you down. So it is going to depend on how you are, you know, going to look at it, but don't let it harden you so much that you, you will never, you know, feel like you, you'll get, you know, good relationships with coworkers again, you know, because you will, you know, um, but you have to not stop, you know, you have to, uh, not let it get to you where you, stop being yourself, you know, never stop being yourself, never stop pushing for, um, for personal growth, you know, um, cause it is all about that personal growth as well. So that's my thoughts for today. So, uh, I hope that, you know, just sharing my experiences will, you know, give you guys something to think about and, um, you know, uh, cherish those good relationships too, that you have. And, um, I, I have a, a friend that she was my supervisor and, you know, now that we don't work together, you know, anymore, um, I miss her because she, she was very good and she helped me to learn a lot. And I, I owe a great deal of what I know now to her because, you know, she, she taught me a lot. So, um, that's a good relationship that I will cherish. So. Yeah, that's my story for today. So uh, I will be back tomorrow for Quiz Friday. And uh, so if you have any questions, let me know. I'm very excited about tomorrow. Quiz Friday. <laughs> 
So if you are a medical coder, a medical coding student, somebody curious about the fascinating world of medical coding, a provider or a nurse, I invite you to like and subscribe and follow me on my journey in medical coding. All right, I will see y'all tomorrow. Bye.